realize one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. Welcome to the call. This is Charles McCutcheon, your favorite entrepreneur. How's everybody doing today? I hope everybody is great. Welcome to Charles' Corner. And for those who just got on, just got on and don't know anything about this call, this is basically built around financial freedom. So we bring on a lot of different topics and all of them put together. If you put all these together, it goes towards financial freedom. Today, I must, must, must speak upon something that's about to hit the country on, on, the, on the East Coast in a big way. It, it's already killing the West Coast. And when I saw the numbers, and I'm going to give you all some, some statistics and give you all some information that you all can go research for yourself. But when I saw this information and how it's laid out, I'm playing connected dots on this thing. For those who don't know me, my name is Charles McCutcheon. You can find me all over social media. Charles McCutcheon, C-H-A-R-L-E-S-M-C-C-U-T-C-H-E-N. I just provide content because I get a lot of content from different places. I'm in the book writing world, the real estate world, the nonprofit, government contracts, uh, getting soon to be into the cannabis world. And that's what I want to bring about. That's what I want to talk about because the cannabis world is going, but it's going bananas. It's going bonkers. I'm going to bring up some, some points that I want y'all to really pay attention to because I don't want the next three years to go by and then you wake up and figure out that, hey, there's a lot of promise in this cannabis industry. And I know we have a lot of myths out there about cannabis and marijuana and whatever. So I'm going to just touch on some points that things that I've learned. Like I said, please do your own due diligence. Uh, I, don't, I don't consider myself a guru at, at anything. I just know enough to be dangerous, and I go get the right information from the right people. And my goal, what I do, is I take the right action. And so that's the same thing I want want you all to do as well. So this thing called cannabis, and the reason Congress is passing bills now saying we need to separate marijuana from cannabis. So what it boils down to, I'm going to give you all a quick summation of, of, of how the breakdown is and why Congress is starting to pass bills and say, hey, we need to make this stuff legal. If you put cannabis at the top of a pyramid, not, not if, you know, if you see a pyramid or a triangle, so cannabis is at the top, and down the right slope of that triangle or pyramid, you have under there, you have marijuana. Down the left side, you have hemp. So that's the difference. A lot of people look at cannabis and just automatically say, hey, that's marijuana. And marijuana, as we know, it causes things for your brain to go, whatever it's going to do to you. But that's the different case for hemp. <clears throat> I'm going to go over some things that hemp can do and, and what we missed out on, but I'm going to go over some documentation as well, like I said. But there's a company out there. If, if, if the, I know Budweiser is out there doing big things with it. They're about to actually uh, – Budweiser Beer Company, for those who don't know. But Budweiser is about to use – cannabis oil inside their beers and there's a a canadian company out there that's doing some good things there's a a cigarette company Uh, those who don't smoke i don't smoke by the name of marlboro and i think they're the second biggest company out there marlboro and what they're doing they have already dumped 4.8 billion into the industry 4.8 4.8 billion, 1.8 billion. They dumped some billions into the industry. That's all we need to know. Uh, the other thing out that that's going on in a big way uh, from the it's a bill out there called a farm bill. If you drew a research on farm bill 
or or do a research on uh, Bill 420, 420. Crazy that they named it that. But what it's doing is releasing some of the laws. That's all it's doing. It's releasing some of the laws. Right now, there's uh, companies doing, you know, statistics on the number in, in far as uh, is dollars, a dollar amount. So the dollar amount that I see is $22.8 billion by 2020 this industry is going to make. Now, I'm getting to a point on all this stuff so you can have a better understanding. So $22.8 billion. So in the U.S., the cannabis industry alone is estimated to grow this year, just this year, $16.5 billion, just this year, family. It, it, those numbers are just crazy to me when you can put anything that have a billion on it. And so to meet that demand, the industry, they're going to need a lot of dispensaries to meet that demand. And so that's what's happening right now. It's already going on in, like, California and Colorado and Arizona. You know, it's big time in Canada. So what we have now is more the East Coast is catching up, really. And now that the East Coast is catching up, you have companies that's coming out of the West Coast that want a part of the market. I mean, even tobacco companies, because even, even farmers, they want a part of the hemp industry, and I'll tell you that in a little bit. So we have those alcoholic beverage companies getting on board. You have Molson Coors Canada, and there's also a giant Constellation brand that's getting on board. They've already committed $4 billion with a B. $4 billion with a B, family. And so I bring this up because I want people to understand that this industry is way bigger than what we can even imagine. We don't have a clue of, of you know, how big this industry is. So New York and New Jersey is catching on. There's a massive opportunity potential because they have a $21 million customer base up there. Uh, New York, they're going to legalize cannabis shortly. And then what's happening across the country is it will be legal, uh, legalized and then recreational will be coming on board. So I know you had the governor up there, uh, up in up in New York, that was talking about it. And what's happening is no state wants to be left behind. So you have New York, you have New Jersey, and New Jersey's like, well, if New York is doing it and they're about to make this money, we're going to get on board so we can make money as well. So uh, New Jersey's right now on the brink of passing their own legalization efforts. So all these different states are getting on board because they don't want to get left. Even Pennsylvania, they're getting pressure to, to legalize it. And what it does in the region, you have increased tax revenue. It creates jobs for, I mean, even for a crippling market, it's creating jobs. Uh, Rhode Island, is, they're rumored to already be discussing, to, you know, how they can get on board. So all these different states are getting on board from Vermont to Maine to Massachusetts. They're sitting in legislation right now, family. And I'm going to tell you all like this. This is what I've been researching. So as I'm going through this research, I'm finding out that, they're allowing federal money to be used for cannabis. Say that one more again. One more again. Hold on. They're allowing federal money to be dumped into the cannabis market. That is, uh, that's just huge. And I just want people to understand it's bigger than what we can even un- know what we have our hands on. So when I talk CBD, when anybody talks CBD, they really should clarify if they're talking about hemp or marijuana, because it's different. There's a difference. It's broken down. So under the marijuana, marijuana has a, a psychoactive component that we, you know, everybody knows about. And you have hemp on the other side. There's some health chemicals in there that's going to help people out. And they're doing studies right now. So anything that I'm telling y'all right now, please go research. Uh, I'm not promoting to say, hey, go do hemp, go do marijuana, go do CBD. That's not what I'm saying here. All I'm saying is do some research on this industry because they're still doing, there's still a lot of laws that's getting passed. There's still a lot of studies that's being done, but it's all about educating right now. If you, as a person, send yourself to say, okay, I want to get educated, if you do it right now, you're going to be leaps and bounds in front of everybody. You could probably be call yourself an expert here shortly. I would say within three years, just call yourself an expert in that industry, whatever it is you want to speak on or if you want to do business in that area because there's so much money in the area. The thing is you don't have to 
be in, in cannabis or hemp or marijuana. You have to be in that industry. When I say marijuana, I'm talking medicinal marijuana. You don't have to be in that industry. But what I would say for any business owner, because I saw a lady, she's making cupcakes and putting cannabis oil in it. Uh, people are using cannabis oil for sports creams. Cannabis oil is going on a lot of different things to help joint pain and all this kind of stuff. And I'm not promoting it. All I'm saying is start getting educated about it. That's what I'm saying. Uh, what's in marijuana is the THC. So when you have uh, hemp and you have marijuana, they're totally two things about, don't quote me on this, like 0.3%. And it's like far too little to cause a high. And all I'm doing is uh, I go through the research of, all these different scientists and all this to get the information that I have. So there's a, a huge, huge growth market right now that's happening. It's sweeping across the country with the, the rules being relaxed. And, and really the rules shouldn't have, they shouldn't even been there. So if you look up bill HR 420, that was already passed and all that's doing is unleashing everything. There's a group, there's an investment group called Vanguard, and they own like 47 million shares in pot stocks or in stocks. And I'm looking at it. It's a company called, I told you all about it, from, from Marlboro. They're called Altria, A-L-T-R-I-A. Uh, they dumped from uh, $1.2 billion to $1.8 billion into the into a company that has cannabis. Uh, it's just so many moving parts to this that it's like not one piece of the puzzle. So let me tell you, if I were you, what I would do and how I would do it, you know, just to get into the industry. Some of you are in insurance. Some of you are marketers. Some of you have security companies. Some of you have trucking companies. Some of you have packing companies. All that, you know, revolves around CBD, cannabis. All of it revolves around it. So you can actually be a marketer for a company that does CBD, but you're still marketing. And it's the same concept of what you're already doing, but I'm I'm saying get your foot in the door to be a part of one of these companies that's going to grow leaps and bounds. I wouldn't wait, family. I, I truly, truly, truly wouldn't wait. And so that's why I just keep passing stuff to people like, hey, have y'all checked this out? What about this? What about that? And it's, it's about paying attention to what's actually going on. And these, these, this stuff is not going away. It is definitely not going away. There's so much news out there. There's, uh, I know in the state of Virginia, they're getting the first, uh, for spring of 2019, in Portsmouth, Virginia, they're allowing medicinal marijuana. And so what some people are doing is waiting and saying, well, it's not all the way legalized yet. And so my take on it is you didn't know that Bill 420 was going to pass. You didn't know the farm bill was going to pass. You didn't know that they were going to have medicinal marijuana in the state. And so when it does pass, a lot of people are going to scramble to get ready. So my thing is why scramble to get ready when you can get ready like right now? You know, you can get ready right now. So my goal for the cannabis is I'm going to get as educated as possible because they have meetings going on right now. Let me put some uh, uh, play connect the dots with y'all so y'all can have a better understanding of what I'm talking about. So this is what's going on in in the world of worlds as we see across the country. As I'm speaking to y'all right now, there's a thing called economically disadvantaged areas all over the country. doesn't matter where. And so what they're doing, and I say there, I'm looking at like the government and government entities. They're throwing money uh, at different cities so they can build up those impoverished areas, right? So right now what I just researched is about $30 million is going to different cities. I'm not going to name those cities because I know one right now. And $30 million is going to go build those cities up and it's economically disadvantaged areas. What they do is move those people out, build the area up, and then they're telling those people they can come back. And so that's just a lot of money. Uh, I don't know how cannabis is going to tie into it, but I'm sure they'll find a way uh, how to tie into it to get some of that money to go into cannabis and then go in to build that bigger. Uh, a lot of nonprofits are getting in the mix right now of getting funding on the federal level, and they're allowing that funding to go to a uh, cannabis group and to build that money out. You know, they're probably going to flip it a thousand dogs one time 
can give that money back to a nonprofit, and that nonprofit can do, go do good things. So there's so many different vehicles we can use in this industry, and it is it's something that we need to pay attention to. And, you know, I just want people to be smarter about it. What I've done uh, online, I've created a uh, – I have like a 20-page report on cannabis. I have all this documentation, everything I'm telling you all, but more exploded view details, and it's at one of my websites, and you can go in there. It's free information. It's just content that, I, you know, you can use to get smarter, really. It's at uh, hiddengemconsulting.com, and that's H-I-D-D-E-N consulting, C-O-N-S-U-L-T-I-N-G, uh, Hidden Gem, G-E-M, sorry about that, not J, Hidden, H-I-D-D-E-N-G-E-M, consulting, C-O-N-S-U-L-T-I-N-G dot com. Go there and go under Cannabis, and you'll find uh, the documents and stuff. You can pull that stuff out. Uh, you can uh, save it if you want to, no big deal. It's just information, really. But it, it, it will give you some insight as well into what you can do in your business and, and how other people are doing it. It's going to give uh, numbers. I'm big on the numbers and what companies are doing. I'm big on the uh, stocks that are out there. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of different uh, stocks that are coming on board in the form of IPOs, which are initial public offerings. Those are just companies that are growing their, their business, and they have cannabis companies. And I don't know, but what I've seen is uh, like a – 2,000% growth uh, in some of these companies. And since it's an IPO, some of those start out real small. And those can be – I've seen IPOs, like right now I'm researching about eight of them. And some of them are like three cents. Some of them are a penny. Some of them are five cents. Some IPOs uh, are, are, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six cents, what have you. And I see some other other stock out there that's four. What I will tell you to do is this, $34. I'm not telling you to go get stock. Go around, buy stock, family. I have to be careful what I say because I'm not giving any legal advice. I'm just giving, providing information and insight, and I want you to do your own due diligence. If I were you, if I don't know anything about stocks, what I would do is go pick up Tony Robbins' book. He has a book out there, and it's called Money Master the Game. Okay? Money, bear with me. Money Master the Game. Y'all need to go look at that that book, and he's going to give you so much content, so much information, and it's going to break down so you can have a financial plan as well. And I went over this last week, so if you go get last week's lesson, you'll be able to understand, like, who's in that book. You have Warren Buffett. You have Ray Dalio. You have all these people who are at the top of their game that understand uh, taxes. Uh, they understand real estate. They understand stocks. They understand investing. I've heard the name of David Swinson, Kyle Bass, Carl Akan. You have the lady Mary Rose. You have uh, Charles Schwab. And I know you might have heard the name Charles Schwab. And he led the revolution to open up Wall Street to individual investors. Uh, they had that iconic company. Like They have about $2.3 trillion that's under management, under their management, under Charles Schwab. So these are like experts beyond experts. And I see people over social media asking everyday people, you know, what do I do in a stock market? First things first, stop listening to everybody. Go do your own research, but get those who are credible, that's successful. And some of the names that I just gave you, those are the successful people we should be getting our information from. I would tell people, don't even listen to me. Take the names that I'm giving you and go research those folks and use their content. Follow successful people. That's all we're doing here. Nothing, not, nothing out of the ordinary, and I do that in every industry. With this industry right here, this cannabis industry, I have CEOs of companies that I'm following, that I'm working with. I got CEOs that have been in the business over 13-plus years, and I'm following their tutelage and giving me insight and information on what I need to do, how I need to do it. And for the stock, I was following the same people that I got information from that I just told you all about. From Ray Dalio to uh, uh, Warren Buffett to Charles Schwab, I'm following their information in the stock market. From the real estate, I'm looking at Ron LeGrand. I follow Ron LeGrand. Uh, it's a couple others that are, that are out there that, that are just I hold in high esteem. So I go travel to meet those guys so they can give me insight. And I bring up real estate because real estate is huge and going to be huge and more and certain on certainly on the East Coast, when you have all these companies come in 
to buy up land. They're going to be buying up land. They're going to be buying up warehouses. And they're going to be buying up structures because they have to spend the money somewhere because banks have not regulated yet to take on all this money as far as capital. When you have uh, dispensaries making 80000 100000 daily, that money has to go somewhere. And so these entities are actually reaching out to me and other people saying, hey, I need a, I need a 250 unit, I need a 500 unit apartment complex because they want to put this money somewhere because, it's, you know, they got to do something with it. So they're trying to buy up assets so they can make money instead of letting it just sit there collecting dust. So I bring all that up to, you know, to give you all insight and information on how I do what I do. I go strictly to the experts for the government contracts. I shoot, I just got out of class today for uh, proposals. So I continuously keep sharpening my axe with government t- contracts. I'm going to the experts. They have, have all these meetings. A lot of them are free. I go to all these free meetings, get all these government contracts from all these federal workers and government contract workers that give us information for free. And they're ex- experts in their field because they've been doing it for over 20 years. So why not go get the information? For nonprofits, I went down to Atlanta, got with a lady who's been doing nonprofits for over 20 years, been from federal to state to local, and, and I just got information from her. I mean, why not go get the best content, the best information possible? It's no different than what we're doing right now in the cannabis world. And I will tell it to you like I can tell it to you. Please, please, please get educated in this industry. Get educated in this industry so you can understand what's going on and how you can win. Because this this cannabis industry is not going away. Uh, medical, medical marijuana is not going away. Uh, there's going to be a lot, a lot of people uh, retiring early due to this industry. And now you know about it. So there's no excuses, really. There's no excuses of what you need to do and what you can do. And like I say, if you can't afford to get penny stocks, you can afford this. This is something I'm going to give you. And this is, uh, some, I'm, I mean, I'm just going to put it to you. This is what I did back in the day, long time ago, long, 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 long time ago, long time ago. So I go into Barnes and & Noble, and I would pick up a book, and I would read the book while I was there. I make go through one, two chapters, and then I'll leave and leave the book on the shelf. Then I go back to Barnes & Noble and get the same book and read it and, and take notes on it as well and take pictures out of the book, pictures with my phone. And all I'm saying is get the content however you can get the content. There's no excuse not to get educated. We can make excuses, but that's not going to get you far. All I'm saying is use the tools that you have. Get creative in how you get the content, the information. And I don't care if you got 20 bucks, put some lunch money on an IPO or something. Before you do that, make sure you get the book. Get the book from Tony Robbins, uh, Money, Master the Game, and, and just pay attention to what's actually going on in this industry. This is going to change lives. Mark my words when I'm telling you all this. This is not something that you can just sit back and be like, oh, I hope this is going to be good. There's no hopes out there. Somebody said, well, I'm going to take a peek at it. No, no, open the book up. Take a real look at this thing. Take a real look at this thing because this is something that the the U.S. Department of Agriculture is on board on. And I will tell you like this, down in Florida, they just named, under the U.S. Department of Agriculture, they just named the director, the director of cannabis. Like, this, come on. Y'all, the writing is on the wall. Federal money is getting thrown at it. We need to pay attention, for one, to what's actually happening in our industry. Companies are doing it. What laws are getting passed? What meetings are being held? And I truly, truly, truly was about to fly out to California for once. I was going to be there probably six hours and then fly right back because I had something to do here in Virginia. But that meeting, I need to go to as many meetings as possible. I can't make excuses. If I didn't have something already set, I would have been there. And I would have been there for six hours. And and some people say, well, I don't want to travel like that. Well, who does? Nobody really wants to do what they want to do. That's the difference between successful and unsuccessful people. We all do the same thing. But unsuccessful people just quit faster. That's all. Successful people don't want to go to these doggone events. I didn't want to go to the doggone, do a doggone government training. I didn't want to do that. But I did it because it's more education. And the, you can get as much education as possible, but if you don't take any action on it, you basically, I think, you're just wasting time. You can't keep going to the same seminar and not do anything with the information family. Some of us take copious notes. 
Some of us take copious notes and go into the same. I've seen people at the same real estate seminar have not done one real estate deal. The same asking the same questions for nonprofits for the last year have not done a nonprofit. Same questions about business credit, trying to get funded through their business without using their credit score or their social security number. And that's been going on for a year and a half, two years. The same people doing the same thing, not taking any action. And they're going to continue to do the same thing. It's like a, a never-ending story, like a book that never ends. And they keep coming back and coming back and coming back. Oh, I'm ready now. Oh, I'm ready now. Oh, no, no, I'm ready now. No, no, I am ready now. It's like, doesn't that get old? Like, when do you want to get out of your situation? Like, really? There's a lot of people struggling right now. Do you want to get out of your situation? If the answer is yes, make a move. If the answer is no, then you're just going to keep sitting on that nail until that nail gets so bad and you're behind. Either you're just going to sit there and keep the pain like most people do, or you're going to get up and move. And I, I don't, I'm not the one to sugarcoat this, family. I'm just not that. If you have uh, sensitive ears, you might want to just shut me off because I can sugarcoat it, and, and we're all being in the same situation, struggling and stuff like that. I know people that are still supposed to do credit like two years from three years, three years ago, and they're still in the same spot. I'm like, come on, little bitty steps, that's all it takes, little steps in the right direction. You can take steps in the wrong direction, but I'd rather you take it in the right direction. Little baby steps, they don't have to be all out. If you want to go all out, go all out. You'll get there faster. If you want to take baby steps, it's going to take you a little bit longer. But at least you're doing something by nothing, by complaining. I see too many people complaining, but they don't want to do nothing. If you're going to complain, do something with it. Do something with the information. You went to the seminar. Do something with it. You went to, uh, you had a conference call. Do something with the information. You went and you paid this course, for this course $5,000. You've done nothing with it. I know people that pay $40,000 to learn real estate, and they have not done one deal, and they stopped. They quit. They quit on themselves. That's amazing to me. That is truly amazing. They spend, how can you spend $40,000 and not do nothing? Like nothing? You don't want to do nothing? It's like you just have money to burn like that? That's what we're doing now? So. I give out this information on a weekly basis, unless there's a holiday. You know, things happen in my life as well. But we put out a lot of information, a lot of content. If you listen to Elation Radio, you're going to get blessed. I will guarantee that. Because we have a lot of people that's putting out information that we can go from literally from A to Z. That's my take from your, your spirit is going to touch your spirit to your soul. That's how I look at the content and the powerful information that we have. I want to thank Ms. Kimmy Robinson out there in Missouri uh, with the Elation Magazine, just the energy and the vibe and the thought behind it to, to travel into Elation Radio. And then I'm not even going to put it out there, what's next. There's just so many things that can come with this from an idea, from one idea and how it morphs into other ideas. And it's just amazing, just truly amazing and where this can go and where it's going like right now and how many people are being touched by this. That's the, that's the key. The key is touching people and moving people without even touching them. My, that's my goal. I'm here to get you a new pair of glasses. I want you to see what I see and get excited about life and living. And people, somebody say, wow, you're, you're, somebody, somebody told me I'm too happy. They told me that. And I said, well, why are you not? Why can't you be? Life is happy if we actually get to live. Some people say, we, you know, you, you only live once. No, you live every day. We have to live every day. Like, it's our last, and you never know. You just never know. Take everything that you're given. Don't take it as a joke. A lot of us taking this as a joke. You know what? The month of September, I'm going to tell you all right now, I usually take about three months, not three months, but three weeks off, like off. I stopped. I shut down for like three weeks. I didn't do that this September. I'm still going right now on a high. Into 20, I'm planting seed, 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 seed on a high right now. I'm still on a high right now. But I'm going to take my break. You better believe that. I get mine. I'm going to get mine. But let me tell you what happened. 
when I stop, my money don't come in because that's how I set it up. Residual streams. We all need residual something. I don't care what you're doing. If you slow down and if because of you slowing down, your money slow down, You in, that's a bad situation to be in, family. And some of y'all are one or two paychecks away. And we saw that big time when it shut the government down. Some people were struggling. And we, he didn't even shut, it was only, what, shut down 30 some 35 days? And people already started to struggle. So we have to get, that should be something that just gives you some insight to say, okay, let me get off my behind and do something that I really don't want to do. But you'll watch that show, though. You got your favorite funky show that you'll watch. You'll hang out with your funky friends at the bar. You know, your little funky friends, y'all just hanging out. What? I say get those same funky friends and talk business. Why don't we start a business? Why don't we do something together? And if they don't want to start a business, I think you just need to hang out with them a little bit less and do some stuff with your business. So if something were to happen, one stream dries up, you got some other streams going on. This should be like some elementary stuff, family. This is not no, you know, oh, wow, he just told me something that just blew me away. No, it ain't nothing like that. This, This is some elementary stuff that we all should know. You know, this is nothing new. This is nothing new. And don't keep putting it down because I know some of y'all have businesses right now. Some of y'all have businesses and ideas and dreams, but you keep picking it up and putting it down. And picking it up and putting it down because life happens. Let me tell y'all something. Life is going to continue to happen no matter what you do, period. I don't care who you are. Life will happen to you. It's going to happen. And don't let the reason you're doing it be the reason you stop. Stop putting excuses on your spouse, your your kids, your your significant other, your your mom, your pops, your grandma, your dog, your cat, your house, your job, your boss. Stop putting it on those people. Turn the finger around and point it right at you. Point it right at you and say, I'm not doing what I need to do. I'm not the best version of me that I can be right now. And I need to change some things. And that's okay. We all have to change every now and again. I'm going through a phase right now. I'm doing my changes. Please believe that. I'm doing to drink more water and work out more. That's part of my change. And cook at home more. I go through phases of eating out. <laughs> For months, I do that. It, it is what it is. But that's something that I recognize and then I make changes on it. So I'm going through my changes right now. Write it down. Make your changes, but write it down so you can see it and you can make moves with it. Don't just keep going through it to be going through it and then be pissed off. And next thing you know, we look up, and it's 2019. Ooh, ooh, it's 2019. We're going to look up, and it's 2019, family. It's an (laughs) eye-opener. But it's December 31st now. Imagine that. Where have you been? What have you done? What have you accomplished? Have you reached your goals? It's December 31st, 2019. Are you going to now say 2020 is your year now like everybody else does and do the exact same thing? Can you do the same thing over and over and over? And it's freaking insanity. That's all it is. It's insanity to keep doing the same thing over and over. But people are content with it, and they're going to continue to do it over and over. And I don't know. It's like, You did the same thing in 2017, now it's 2018, 2019, and then 2020, and now it's going to be as eye-opening experience. No, it's not going to be eye-opening. You're just going to be doing the same thing. That's all. And it's not nothing. I'm not throwing heat. I'm just telling you all what I know. That's just what it is. There's no miraculous thing that's going to happen until you really get up off your behind and make moves. That's it. Nothing else matters after that, family. You got to get up even if you don't want to. I don't care how broke you are. You can't tell me about broke. You can't not tell me about broke. It doesn't matter how broke you are. You have to get up and you have to go for it, period. Go, no excuses, period. This is Charles McCutcheon. I'm your favorite entrepreneur, and I want to pray this out, Father God, for allowing me to come here and bless the people. Father God, I want you to give them the know-how and the action, to be able to take action, to make something happen in their lives. We know a lot of us are going through the struggle, and we know everything can be done through you. In your name I pray. Amen. 
You can find me at Charles McSpeech at Yahoo or Charles McCutcheon. Look online, social media. I'm there. I have so much content to give, and I'm sharing it with the world. Y'all take it easy. Thank you, Miss Kimmy. Have a good one.